This is Josiah Plays, Pillars of Eternity 2, Deadfire. We're here in the gullet and we're going to explore this zone thoroughly now. Interesting. We've done some things in the gullet already, but we didn't really fully check the place out. Do you think Overseer Hatenga will come for us? Hungry and tired. Tired and hungry. Always. You gotta go early to get the good stuff from the prize share pile. Amira's winds whip today. Are you also a pirate? You don't look like a Roparu. Half-eaten food scraps litter the pile. A rancid stench rises from it. That's gross. These people are not living the dream here. Andra's blessings. Now we talked to this beggar already. The Rupara touches two gaunt knuckled fingers to her lips. Can you tell me how to get to Delver's Row? You do not know? But you... you... She stops abruptly, her gaze falling to the ground. Her bony hands tremble in her lap. She flicks her gaze to you, then looks away quickly, before you can meet her eyes. You frighten her. But Anoy might know. Though he is blind, there is no part of the gullet he does not see. Thank you. We come down this way. We've been down this way. It just leads to the Narrows, which leads to Delver's Row and to the Undercroft. You see that I am occupied, yes? Sweet incense masks the odor of the offerings. Rotten fruit and spoiled fish. They're offering nasty-ass fish to a god. I don't know if that's the best idea. I guess it's the thought that counts. I mean, when you're poor... <clears throat> oh, a little forsaken cat. We just got Ickis. Ickis. Not fish is poison to disease and body and mind afflictions. Well, we've read about Rotiti root before, but I don't know that we've read about Gainsveff berries. These strange berries have a delicate, feathered surface. They are used in the production of Svef, a powerful hallucinogenic drug. Though originally grown in distant Tal Kness, Gain Svef plants have been transported, transplanted and cultivated in the Deadfire, where the alternating wet and dry seasons provide ideal growing conditions. While the Tal Kness variant of Gain Svef is a thin, fail pre fail plant? Frail plants. Those found growing wild throughout the archipelago are quite hardy. So that's how you make some drugs. What's up, Sin? How you doing? Good to see you, Sin. How was your stream? How was your day? I, I went over to my mom's house for quite a while today for Mother's Day. Thanks for the host, Sin. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. So this is Pitley's Sanctuary. Now, we've learned that Pitley is a possible source of food for the gullet. Because Pitley is a children of the Dawn Stars. A missionary. They're known for their charitable work. It was good. Did you stream all day?
What were you streaming? Something weird. Something different. Oh, I think at one point I saw you streaming Stardew Valley. Oh, you're watching Infinity War later today? That's awesome. I'm gonna go see it tomorrow. I'm gonna go see it tomorrow. So, hope you enjoy it. You started late today. So let's see if we can talk to this Pitley about something. Well, there's Pitley. The flasks are empty, but for the crusty residue of used up medicines. The woman bends over a pile of dried, bitter-smelling herbs. She's crushing and mashing them on a dirty scrap of parchment, coughing with effort. She steps in front of you, block your way, wiping a ragged sleeve across her roomy, bloodshot eyes. Because I'm an Aethasian priest, as she does, her hood slips and you glimpse three faded stars on her forehead. The emblem of the Children of the Dawn Stars, which we've met before. We already have rep with the Children of the Dawn Stars. You were playing Stardew, then Grimwood, then Stories, the Path of Destinies, and finally Slay the Spire. Oh, that Stories, the Path of Destinies looks interesting to me. I just put that on my Steam wish list. Is it good? Faintly? Good God, I nearly didn't recognize you. You look more death warmed over than Dawnstar. Hey there. Gives a nod and a wink. I didn't see you there, Shoddy. Listen, you and your friends should move along. She turns her head and stifles a croupy laugh. I'm not feeling so good, and I'd hate to get you sick. Are you ill? You hear muffled hacking and the unsteady rhythm of labored, wheezing breaths coming from the back of the room. Did you go check the Steam store? It was free. Don't know if it still is. Interesting. Nothing a little ginger root and some bed rest won't cure. Please, let me be. She takes another step, blocking your view of the room beyond. The herbs on the table give off an odor that scratches at your throat. You've got nothing to fear. Aethys's light shines in me too. You're gonna finish it one day because you already got the sequel? Kinda meh, you don't like the dialogue or writing? Oh, that doesn't sound encouraging. Well, at least the idea of him is still doing some good. Ain't our Watcher just wonderful? Saintly too. Shoddy beams, her brown eyes like liquid fire. Aloth, however, not thrilled, sighs through his nose. The sequel is different, it's a murder mystery hack and slash, that sounds really bizarre. It's me I'm worried about. That light won't protect you from getting sick. I can tell you that much from personal experience. She ruefully wipes a fleck of blood from the corner of her mouth. There's some sick Raparu in the back. Not much I can do for them now besides keep them comfortable. She looks at the crimson speckle on her wrist. And hidden. Is that wise? Keeping a room full of sick people in the most crowded district in the city? He glances around as if he can see noxious vapors in the air. It's better than leaving them to wander the district. I can give them a dignified death, if nothing else. Why are you hiding sick people? Because they've got drowner's lung. Spreads like gossip and kills even faster. All right, good night, Sin. Thanks for stopping by. <coughs> Thanks for that host, too. See you tomorrow. Have a good one. What's drowner's lung? A gift from the Valians. She scowls, dabbing the room from her eyes. Fills your lungs with fluid. Gets you coughing all the time, trying to clear them. 
One of my patients coughed so hard, she broke a rib. That's pretty bad. Eventually, it gets so bad, you can't hack it out. You just lie there, struggling for breath, until you choke on your own phlegm. I hear it's a long, hard end. It sounds terrible. Trails off for a moment, a distant look in her watering eyes. I heard some Raparu had gotten sick, so I brought them here to care for them. City healers don't come down here. She frowns and gives her nose a vicious swipe. Realized what it was when I heard the rattle in their chests, the way they gasped for air. She wipes the back of her hand on her leg and shudders. Only cure is an elixir made with pine seed oil. It costs a lot, though not nearly as much as an epidemic. I will get this pine seed oil for you. Still, if news of this outbreak gets out, these poor souls will get tossed into the old city. No one with any money in Nekataka spends it on the Raparu. It's kind of you to help them. I wish I could do something. Maybe you can. Her filmy eyes shine. You can get nearly anything on Delver's Row. Only trouble is finding it. And paying for it. Unfortunately, the children of the Dawn Stars don't have many connections in this part of town. She turns away, whooping and hacking into her arm. Need something? What interest do the children of the Dawn Stars have in the gullet? About the only honest one. The Raparu here are treated like garbage. Even made to eat garbage from that scrap heap opposite the lift. She shakes her head. And Dario and his principy scum took advantage of the neglect down here to set up the black market on Delver's Road. Dario? He runs most of the criminal mischief that goes on here. Yeah, I've met him. He's not my favorite person. Some say he's an old Valian traditionalist. Some say he's a thug with good taste. She holds her hands out, shifting her open palms like platforms on a scale. Either way, I steer clear of him. She shivers, whether out of fear or illness you couldn't say. Go on. All the while, the gullet gets more crowded as tribes from the other islands come to Nekataka. Some are driven from their homes by pirates, raiders, even trading company thugs. Her eyes darken. Others hear stories of the foreign wealth pouring into the city. What they don't realize is most of it flows between the foreigners and the palace. She makes a circular motion with her finger. Hmm. Aethis's light must shine even in places like this. So I keep reminding myself. She smiles, but wearily. Then maybe Delver's Rose spreads some of the wealth down here. That's what Dario and his people say. They recruit Raparu to sneak things from the docks, report on meetings between traders. She grimaces. <sighs> I can't blame the Ruparu. Not when the alternative is eaten from a trash pile. But I don't trust these Principi any more than I do the trading companies. She folds her arms, shaking her head. And whenever the city authorities finally crack down, the Ruparu will be caught in the middle. So the Dawn Stars are helping out? As best we can. Most of us came from Ray Saris after the Vorlis Plot and the Saints War. Or we were born to families that did. We remember what it's like to scrape by. Her eyes stray to the stained and spotted floor for a long moment. I see. Some days, I think maybe this is why Aethus brought us to dead fire. So we can do some good. Other days, I'm too damn tired. She arches her back, popping her spine. I was told you may be able to help with the food shortage in the gullet. We tried, but the one away is prize share, meaning anything we give these people has to go through the palace. 
Best I can tell, our food went to the queen's table, assuming it didn't rot in the storehouse first. If the queen sanctioned more shares for the Raparu, would the Dawnstars donate crops again? Her thin lips worry together, but she nods. That's a question for Solwyn. I'd ask her myself, but I got my hands full here. She's high priestess at the Temple of Gaul. Tell her Pitley sent you. She'll listen. Probably. About the only and Dario and his principy scum. With Aethys's blessing, I'll still be here. All right. Food for thought. Pitley explained that her high priestess, Sawin, at the temple... Why does that name seem so familiar? At the temple of God in the sacred stair, holds the authority to ration a share of the Dawnstar's food supply. However, Pitley is preoccupied with her own work and hasn't yet spoken to Sawin about the shortage. Several Raparu in the gullet have fallen ill with Drowner's Lung, a deadly and contagious disease. Hitley, a priestess from the Children of the Dawnstars, is caring for them in secret and needs medicine. Pitley thinks I could find the medicine she needs on Delver's Row. Alright, so we'll go looking for that medicine. Scrawled prayers, summon who want a script, are stashed in the shrine. I wouldn't take anything from this woman. Even if it wasn't stealing. A bitter smelling sludge fills the cups. Hitley also follows Aethys. Will you chant blessings over us too? Can't heal. Combat only. Can't actually bless either. Combat only. The only thing I can do is drop a sunbeam on you and that certainly will not help. Here. This supposedly heals. A wet, labored breath gurgles in his chest. It is difficult to speak. Please, I must save my breath. Alright. I feel bad for these people. I want to help them. You're speaking to me, eh? Go on, then. You see that I'm occupied, yes? Well, we don't know who Thelus is, but we're going in here. We're going in. Because somebody in here might need our help slash have information for us. And there might be some dangerously locked chests in here. Locks. Very dangerous for children. I don't feel like taking stuff from people in the gullet. Well, whoever is in here, they're not actually home. This is a very interestingly designed area. I like it. Alright, we've already talked to e Enoi. Let's talk to him again real quick and see if he has any insights. Any new insights based on these quests that we've, you know, started doing. We're not going to take from him either. 
The old man grimaces some attempt at a smile. He inclines his head to you, indicating he's aware of your presence. Alright, doesn't look like there's anything else to say to him. Stomach rumbles loudly. A damp, musky draft billows up from the chasm. Okay, this is where I came in. That's where the beggar that we first talked to is. A lot of rain falling, a lot of waterfalls, a lot of water down below. Just water everywhere in this place. It's very wet. It must be so humid here. Well, let's find out what's going on in Biha's home. How come every one of these homes I visit is empty? They're all supposedly someone's home, but you come in here and there's just nobody here. Is it because of the time of day? It's 7 p.m. Why wouldn't they be home? Because I haven't seen anybody named Biha or anybody named Thelus walking around or in the whole bar or anywhere else, so... Alright, this leads to the hole we've already fully fully delved into all that the hole has to offer. So let's go up this way. Oh, a scene. Please, I did nothing. <clears throat> you see a man being dragged along a rickety boardwalk toward a rusty cage that swings over the abyss. He strains against the guard's grip. The guard delivers a savage backhand. Enough! Or do you wish to consign her to the old city as well? The warrior casts a meaningful glance at a woman standing a short distance away. So they're throwing people into the ancient monster-filled ruins down below for what purpose, I don't understand. Let him go! Oh, there's Biha. Hey, we were just in your house. She screams at the guards. But she doesn't dare approach. The man notices her. His face lights up with shame. Bea, I'm sorry. Uh... Your tongue flops like a dying fish. I tire of its stink. Lower him down. I'm a little bit sick of the Mataru's bullshit. I feel a lot of sympathy for the Roparu. The guards drag the Reparo into a metal cage and lock him inside. He shouts and rattles the bars as it is lowered over the edge of the platform. Eventually, his screams are lost to the depths. May Tangaloa devour your souls, you cold-blooded eels. Yeah, Bia's not happy about that. Okay. So I suspect she's gonna go home. And I can go now to her house. I witnessed what looked like an execution. A man was dragged into a cage and lowered into a deep ravine. Before he disappeared, he called to a woman named Biha. I saw a Huana man named Bataru lowered into the old city. I don't know how I know his name. He shouted something to a woman named Bia, but he was sent down before he could finish. Let's go talk to Bia real quick and see if we can find out if there's some way we can help here. Some way for us to be of assistance. Because I do like to be of assistance. Wait, now there's a million fucking people in here? Oh, she's mad. She's practicing with a weapon. There's some kids here. They say the same. Now I know what they mean when they say, do you think Overseer Hatenga will come for us? That was Overseer Hatenga who just threw dude in the pit. He's the guy that's in charge of consigning people to the abyss, I guess. 
Two sickly Huana infants lie swaddled under rags. Oh man, I feel so sorry for these gullet people. A woman thrashes a row of tunics and sarongs hanging from the rafters. Her pointed teeth are gritted in frustration, her lips set in a snarl. The clothes are spotless, yet she swings a handful of reeds again and again, grunting with each blow. Several children huddle together, whispering and looking on with red, tearful eyes. Vitaro is gone. Dead. What more do you want? She punctuates each statement with a fierce whack of the reeds. The children flinch, looking between you and the woman. Are you all right? She looks at you for the first time. A fraction of her anger burns off. Forgive me. I thought you were one of the foreigners who sent him away. Outsiders here always go to the tavern. My village was not like this. Why does Queen Onikaza not send the foreigners away? How did you know the man who was lowered into the old city? One of the children starts to say something, but Bia shoots him a sharp glare. She turns back to you, arms crossed, gripping the reed bundle tightly. Vitaro is punished already, I say. Whatever offense he gave, do not hang it on our necks. She begins swatting at the laundry again, though with considerably less gusto. I know you're scared, but I'm not here to harm you. <laughs> we say the only thing that live in these depths are ghost eels. And fish eaten by ghost eels. She grunts. Which are you? She turns away from you, striking the sarong harder and harder. The traitors say they bring riches in their big ships. The fabric pops and snaps beneath her fury. Sweat is flying, spattering the clean sarong. But what reaches the gullet? Only crime and sickness, I say. She pauses to take another couple of swings at the sarong. I'm gonna listen. The Rawatayans promise marvels, strong walls, and plenty for all. She moves on to the next tunic, thrashing it with an even greater fury. Akira, still my back aches from building their fort, and still I live here. And Mataro said we would finally leave. She breaks off, her shoulders heaving as she catches her breath. I'm so sorry. It is only another word. She shrugs, still catching her breath. It's too bad that those overseers are not actually made of clothing, because then sh they'd be fucked. She's got like plus 50 to hit versus clothing after all this training. Outsiders cover our islands with walls and gates. Many Huana come to Nekataka, but even here, the outsiders crowd us. Yeah, it's not great. In the villages, the chieftains know even the Roparu. Here, even neighbors are strangers. That is Deadfire now. Sounds like their whole culture and way of life is being massively uprooted and, and corrupted. She shakes her head angrily. I only want to be free of this place. That is how the trouble started. I heard a Rawatayan captain took up at the tavern. Suduzo, they call her. I've met her. They say she is a traitor, so I thought maybe she will take passengers. But Tara went and found her in the tavern. Her eyes go hard and dark. Next I see him. The guards are dragging into the cage. She bares her teeth at the memory. Maybe I can talk to Seduzo. She looks at you with the same critical eye she's been giving her laundry, wringing and tugging the reeds. They say many Rawatine captains are women. Maybe her ears will open better to you. She looks around, taking in the hanging clothes, the huddled children, and the warped and splintering walls of the shack around them. Bataro took some coin. Everything he scraped together working on the docks. When he went to bargain with the captain. I would offer it to you, but it is probably in the old city with Bataro. Or in someone else's pocket. Did I find the money he hid? Well, I'm gonna give her the money anyway. I found the money Bataru hid. Take it. That much copper would only bring suspicion. Shakes her head. Besides, maybe Suduza will accept it in exchange for passage. Can you take a different ship? She shakes her head. Many ships leave from Queen's birth, but the Valians take slaves. 
She lowers her voice and glances furtively around. They say the Principe smuggle goods in the caverns below, but I cannot trust such people. That's probably wise. But the Rauatians have mighty cannons and a big homeland they abandon for ours. Perhaps there is more room for us there. It's not a bad idea. How many of you need passage to Rauatai? We are six. Three children, two babes, and me. Does no one else from the cast look after them? Akira. It was so in the village where Bataro and me came from. But here, we are all strangers. No one looks in on the sick or cares for the children. Tell me about this Rawatayan captain. Seduzo. Biha is holding the reed so tightly that she snaps one in two. They say she is a traitor, so I thought maybe she will take passengers. But she threw Bataro out. She looks down at the broken reed in her hands. Always Bataro was careful with his words, just like you. But a Raparu in Nekataka gives offense just by breathing the air of his betters. I could look for Bataro. I could never ask someone to go down to the old city, but since you offer... She trails off, working the reeds between her hands while hope and dread battle in her eyes. It is a big and dangerous place. But perhaps he hid himself. Perhaps... She steadies herself with a shake of her head. Please, help him if you can. Or bring me news if you cannot. How many of you need passage to Rauta? We are six. Three children, two babes, and me. Are they all yours? Such a strange question. A Raparu child is the child of all Raparu. At least that is the way in the village where Bataro and me came from. But here, we are all strangers. No one looks in on the sick or cares for the children. That's sad. I'll do what I can. Farewell. A Rawatayan captain named Seduzo is at the slum's tavern. Bia believes Seduzo could take her and the children to Rawatai, but after what happened to Bataru, she's hesitant to approach the woman on her own. I offer to look for Bataru in the old city. Biha asked me to help him or bring news of his fate. Alright, we're gonna solve these people's problems. Don't even trip, people. We got you covered. It is your lucky day. Sekaruna and crew are on the case. So, let's go back We're up awake here. We're right now, aren't we? Yes, Shodi. We're awake right now. So here's Overseer Hatenga. Be careful. The gullet is no place for outsiders. Thought in front of the queen once, and now I'm stuck down here. Smells worse than usual today. You sure you're in the right place? A guard folds his arms, watching the activity on the walkways through slitted eyes. A coral piercing juts from his lower lip. He notices you with a sharp nod. Why was that man sent below? Botaro? He associated with foreign criminals. He spits. The gob of saliva is just one more splotch on the weathered and mottled boards. I cannot be certain about Biha, so I let her go. But I will be watching her. These wicked sorts overrun the gullet and corrupt the Raparu. Our justice must be swift and firm. Where's Biha now? Hers is the first house you come to. Just there. He points southwest across the walkways. You'll probably find her there. Where does this lift go? To the old city, Ikira. A god's cursed ruin filled with walking corpses and abominations of the deep. <sighs> and the remains of lawbreakers and troublemakers. That doesn't sound too bad. The gullet is no place to wander. Watch yourself for rowdies and pirates. I think you'd better tell rowdies and par pirates to watch themselves for me. You're in the gullet with me! Alright. Dario gave me permission to use the lift to the Undercroft. 
For several seconds, he only blinks at you. That is interesting, because this lift goes to the old city. I hear there is a lift to the Undercroft from Delver's Row. His eyes narrow. And Delver's Row is a haven for criminals, of which Dario is the worst. I am sworn to punish such criminals and their associates. Bring your punish, motherfucker. He is quiet, studying your face with a suspicious glare. I think someone takes advantage of you. You must be careful in the city. Few have your honor. Ah, because I have a reputation of being honest. He looks at you with grave concern. Let's say there were some people sick with Drowner's Lung. Wait, should I, should I tell him that? I don't think I should tell him that. I want access to the lift to the old city. Are you mad or merely lost? That place is a punishment for the lowest sort. He waves a hand toward the exit. Go and explore some place with pleasant views and fresh air. The harbor, or Pariki's Overlook. Believe me, I can look after myself. It's your neck, Ikira. He whistles, and the guard standing by the lift looks over at him and nods. We will leave the lift down there for half a day. That should be enough time to come back to your senses. After that, you are on your own. The guard will let you pass. Though I urge you to reconsider. Okay. I don't know if I should mention the thing with... The gullet is no place to I don't know wander. where this is going. Watch yourself for rowdies and pirates. I quick saved, and if this is bad, I'll reload. Let's say there were some people sick with Drowner's Lung. His narrowed eyes widen. Let's not say that. Shodi cuts you a warning glare. This would be a great danger to the gullet. Possibly the entire city. You know something? He watches you as Pierce's lips parted. No, I was just wondering. Do not joke of this. Okay, so that's not obviously something to talk to. I thought maybe I could get his help with it somehow, but obviously this is not a guy that's going to be helpful. Mind the railings. You're sure you are in the right place. So this will take me to the Sacred Stair or to the Brass Citadel. Which is good. I'm gonna leave the Reparu their stuff. Oh, this is this is Mataru shit. I'll take it. Smells worse than usual today. I'm not gonna go down here right now. The overseer says you can go below. Uh, of course, this could be time sensitive. If I don't go down there and look for him right now, he could be dead by the time I go down there. I don't think I need repair supplies. I don't. Let's leave those alone. Surely this hunger could rival Andra's deaths. He hacks a blackish glob of phlegm under the ground. The wheel groans with the cage's weight. It's slick with protective oil. Well, there's a lot of things I want to do here, but I feel like I should probably go down this cage and look for dude first, because he might only have a limited amount of time to live down there if I don't if I don't get down there and help him. I don't want another Elodi situation on my hands here. I can't I can't have that on my conscience. The Overseer says you can go below. And go below we shall. A rickety metal cage swings over an abyss. Your clothes billow with a foul wind from below, and faint screams and roars echo from the depths. Still, you can make out no details from this distance. You step into the jouncing cage. The door slams shut, and your descent begins with the rattle of chains. As your eyes adjust to the bloom... The bloom? As your eyes adjust to the gloom, you begin to make out crumbling ruins and shadows flickering between them. The cage comes to rest with a groan. 
let's see where this takes us. So presumably there's going to be some undead down here. Which is okay, because we got two clerics who can cast Holy Radiance, which fucks up undead. So I'm happy about that. Bring on the undeads. Undead is already plural, Josiah. You don't have to put an S on it. Oh, I don't have to put an S on it, but think about it. It's fun. Just say it. Say undeads. Isn't that fun to say? You know it is. You know you want to. Thanks for that host, Bloodluster. Much appreciated. Um... Okay. This place looks really friendly. Super friendly. Let's quick save. Be very careful here. Creep forward just a little bit at a time. That is a shitload of bodies. Like, so many bodies. Legs and arms and heads. Oh, there's somebody that's dead and there's this spirit that I can... Somebody left their two golden swoles here. Oh no, we all just became sickened by a noxious cloud. We're in a slog zone. Waterfalls echo in the distance below. Isn't there something here that we can... A mace. Just a mace. That is amazing loot. Really, Josiah? Well, Nox Moo isn't here to do it, so I have to take up his job for him. Amazing loot, he says. Great. Well, we found our first ghouls in Pillars 2. Let's see what everybody does. And we've got a rot gas. I'm gonna paralyze him. Doesn't that thing explode when it? It makes a worm puddle. A pestilent rot gas. I don't think they really need the blessing. Looks like we're fine. Vessel flesh. This reeking flesh once held a bound soul. With his energy fading, the flesh is entering rapid decay. Okay. We're all sickened by whatever. Let's take a look at our journal entries. Ghouls. Star ghouls. Regular ghouls. I don't think I read about revenants either. Alright, tell me about ghouls. Apparently they're level 3. They don't have that much will. They have a grave touch. 
It is generally understood that ghouls retain enough cunning to make dangerous hunters and adversaries, but not enough to be concerned about their rapid deterioration. Deterioration? Deterioration. Like Darghouls, they are drawn to secluded environments, though some gravitate towards cemeteries in search of readily available flesh. The meat of dead kith satisfies some of the ghouls' hunger, but it does little to sate their need for soul essence. Inhabiting a graveyard may actually hasten a ghoul's decay, as it reduces their incentive to seek out living sources of food. Darghouls represent... The first stage in the irreversible decay of a dead body that is sustained only by soul energy. In this state, Darghouls have lost some portion of their memories and mental abilities, but still retain enough self-awareness to recognize their own decline. Their hunger for living flesh is so insatiable as to make them reckless. They are more aggressive in their pursuit of kith than even vampires, yet crave secret and secluded environments where they can eat their prey without inciting the wrath of civilized communities. Some vampires dread this stage more than those that follow, for they know they will likely possess enough of their faculties to fully appreciate losing of them. So when you first get resurrected or, or animated as an, uh, as an undead, you're a vampire. You still basically look human, you basically have all your mind, but as long as you keep eating Soul Essence, you stay that way, but if you don't get enough Soul Essence, you eventually become a Dar Ghoul. And then if you don't get enough after that, you become a Ghoul. And then eventually, I think, l long enough after that, you rot away and just become a Skeleton. Revenants are... Oh, you become a Revenant next. Revenants are undead that have devolved beyond even the relative intelligence of a Ghoul. Revenants retain their instinctive hunger, but they don't have the will or intelligence to reliably satisfy it. They are drawn to any environment where dead or dying bodies can be found. Rotgasts. Rotgasts look pretty horrifying. And they make a worm puddle when they die. Pestilent Rotcast. Beware the drowned kith. Pity the poor sailors, the fishers, and the camellia clam divers, who in a stroke of ill luck ingest the waterborne rotter, the parasite that takes hold in death. Known as the Rotgasts, these are the corpses that continue to roam, stinking and rotting, skin sloughing from bone, while hosts own innards flourish and infestation that steadily consumes from the lungs out. That sounds horrifying. The first stage of incubation progresses as a welling of a thousand worms from the guts to the tongue. That's nasty. Enabling transmission through regurgitation and watery discharge. Later stages of the nesting cycle involve bulging, easily burst tumors, blackened blood, worms writhing through the skin, and the complete loss of motor functions. Sadly, there is no known remedy save for the utter destruction of the body. Wow, rot rotgasts are kind of some sliggins. Those aren't good. They're not good. Let's uh, read this dead person's soul. Hopefully this isn't the guy that was just lowered down here. Noxious cloud from all the dead bodies. I'm in combat? Why are we in combat? There must be one of them left alive here somewhere. Or maybe we're just in combat because of the... Because of the sickening aura. Well, that's weird.
This body has been savaged by many fangs and claws. A cloud of essence hangs over it. You recognize it as belonging to Botaro, the man you saw lowered from the gullet earlier. Oh, I came down here as fast as I could. He's already dead. His soul remnant pulses with urgency. Let's read his soul. You prepare yourself for the now familiar jolt and feel yourself pulled into one of his memories. You are being dragged toward the cage, but you're not looking at it. Or the darkness below. Soon there will be nothing else for you. Overseer Hatenga is holding the marked coin, the Suolanet, and glaring at you. You already tried explaining yourself, but it's no use. He knows where you got it. tucks it into his pocket. Instead, you look at Bia, furious and heartbroken where she stands beyond the guards. There's something you need to tell her, but she's so far, receding farther by the second. Let's recall what we need to tell her. You are standing in front of a man. His dark, wizened face reminds you of old leather, but a delicate work of embroidery rests in his lap. He holds out a purse with long, fine fingers. It's heavy. It's probably more money than you've earned in your entire life. You try not to let this show on your face. You know what to do. The crime lord nods at you. Please remind me. You'll meet our mutual associate near the Adra Mill. She will give you a package. Pay her and bring this package to the Undercroft. He watches you for understanding before he continues. My people are particular about security, but show them the swollen net and they will let you pass. You pat your pocket for the marked coin. Yes, it's still there. You leave the lair of Dario the Lean and zip through the narrows. Past the sveff chewing guards, left at the four way intersection, and left again at the gullet. Your hands are shaking, and you're remembering the rumor B had told you about of a merchant captain at the tavern. The money is heavy in your hands. It's a risk, but you realize you've already decided to take it. You approach the tavern with your heart in your mouth, realizing that you can't just walk in there holding Dario's purse. You need to hide it. Fortunately, the rubble around uh, around you offers plenty of hiding places, so I did actually find this money. When no one is looking, you clear some stones out of one corner and hide the purse beneath them. There. You'll come back for it once you've made your deal with this Rawatayan. You're almost starting to feel better about it, too. As Bataru walks into the tavern, the memory fades, and you find yourself once more looking at his corpse. Come along now. I'll guide you through the wheel. Shodi's lantern clinks softly as she drags it through the clustered essence, harvesting the lost soul. Shodi harvested a soul in the old city in Nekataka. Botaro hid Dario's money in a corner of rubble near the tavern. I offered to look for Botaro in the old city. Biha asked me to help him or bring news of his fate. I found Botaro's corpse in the old city. Alright. Well, let's keep looking around down here. making us sick.
bones are warm to the touch. What's all this with these flowing lines heading towards something? The coral snuff. You hear a faint melody near the statue. Hmm. Some Asada Nui shells. 